Welcome to the show. You might recognize me as Survivor Star, John Lovett. And while you might have hated to see me go, I'm sure you love to watch me leave. All right. This week, first of all, just so I understand for my planning purposes and subject to change, how many people here saw Survivor? Okay. You only watched for me? Okay. Hear that, Joe? Uh, but first, let's get into it. What a week. At a rally on Tuesday, Sarah Huckabee Sanders kicked things off by attacking Vice President Harris for not having biological children. So my kids keep me humble. Unfortunately, Kamala Harris doesn't have anything keeping her humble. Disgusting. Uh, it's just ridiculous. You don't have to have children to stay humble. You can also go on Survivor. Uh, <laughs> That's also what Republican politics has become, saying Kamala Harris's name wrong on purpose while insulting her for not having biological children. Oh, is Kamala Harris not showing you, Sarah Hukabea Sanders, enough gratitude <laughs> and humility? That's how it's pronounced, right? Hukabea? <laughs> uh, you're not getting enough uh, humble pie from fucking Kamala Harris? I'm like, your candidate? How many kids does Trump have to have before the humility kicks in? <laughs> Once Donald Trump took the stage, he was ready to deliver his pitch-perfect message about the economy. What the hell does COVID mean? The China virus. And a lot of people think they did that because they were not happy with me as president. In the immortal words of Carly Simon, you're so vain you probably think this once-in-a-generation global pandemic is about you. <laughs> Trump talked about President Biden calling him after the second assassination attempt. President Biden called me yesterday. He was very nice. We had a very nice conversation. I appreciated that he called about, you know, what happened the other day. And he says, he's committed. He's committed. Ha. Ah. Of course, Trump supporters are baffled by a polite phone call between people who can't stand each other. They haven't heard from their own children in years. Trump also shouted out Vice President Harris for calling him as well. And today, I, a little while ago, I got a, nice, a very nice call from Kamala. No, no, it was very nice. It was very nice. It's, it's, it was very, very nice, and, and we appreciate that. But we have to take back our country. We have to win. We're going to win, and we're going to make America great again. That's all there is to it. Very simple, isn't it? Trump is a pretty simple guy. Just check in on him. Some friends you can see once a year and you pick up right where you left off. Trump is a check-in friend. He will never reach out to you, but he appreciates the call. Kamala should call Trump every morning. The only problem is his advisors would stop putting her through because he's basically madly in love with any person who is nice to him for about an hour after. Speaking of people Trump is madly in love with, Melania Trump's press tour for her forthcoming <laughs> memoir rolls on. The former first lady posted a video titled, Why Do I Stand Proudly Behind My Nude Modeling Work? Said Melania, it's because if I stood in front of my nude modeling work, you wouldn't be able to see my bazongas. <laughs> that one got me. <laughs> and you know what? Melania should stand proudly behind her nude modeling work. Nude modeling is not the shameful portion of Melania Trump's life. <laughs> but let's find out why together. Why do I stand proudly behind my nude modeling work? The more pressing question is, why has the media chosen to scrutinize my celebration of the human forum in a fashion photo shoot? Are we no longer able to appreciate the beauty of the human body? She has a point. I'm sick of the double standard where Doug Emhoff can do nude modeling work and nobody bats an eye. <laughs> Did I miss something? Has the media been talking about this lately? Feels like she brought it up. You know, like, why has the media chosen to scrutinize my perfect SAT scores? Are we no longer able to appreciate a student who excels in both verbal and math? <laughs> Don't worry, there's more. Throughout history, master artists have revered the human shape, evoking profound emotions and admiration. We should honor our bodies and embrace the timeless tradition of using art as a powerful means of self-expression. Sure. Uh, <laughs> no amount of nudity could be as offensive as this freshman comp writing. Throughout history, get out of here. 
Since the dawn of time, man has longed to see a boob. <laughs> For as long as there have been portraits. Speaking of boobs, America's Goblin, Rudy Giuliani, opened... <laughs> Open for Trump at a rally in Uniondale, New York on Wednesday, and, and he had this message for would-be assassins. No more attacks! <laughs> no more attacks! No more! Stop it! <laughs> if there's anybody behind it, I'll find them! I did it to the mafia, I can do it to them! If you're behind it, I'm looking at you, and I'm gonna get you! Go ahead and laugh, but this is word for word what Giuliani screamed at the sky after 9-11. And you know what? There hasn't been a 9-11 since. Oh. Hey, man. Oh, that's too much? <laughs> hey, man. You're just a retired old guy. You might startle someone if they come around the corner too fast and come upon you. But that's about it at this point. Also, you can't tisk-tisk assassins like they're golden doodles with their paws on the counter. It doesn't even work on golden doodles. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> it's worth just dwelling on for one second, which is that like, Rudy Giuliani, you're just a disbarred old man at an event. <laughs> you don't have the ability to stop crime anymore. You're cosplaying as somebody who's in law enforcement in front of this group of people screaming at the top of your lungs. Like you're gonna, go how are you, Rudy Giuliani, gonna find anybody? You couldn't find your way to a chair at the Republican National Convention. <laughs> Then, when Donald Trump took the stage, he made a bold promise. It hasn't been done for a long time, but we are going to win New York. Start spreading the booze. <laughs> hey, I'm making widely off-base predictions here. <laughs> bah, bah. All right. After the rally, Donald Trump broed out with the crypto crowd using Bitcoin to buy a round gathered at PubKey, Manhattan's unofficial cryptocurrency bar. Sick of going out in New York City and meeting gorgeous, interesting single people? Try PubKey, Manhattan's unofficial cryptocurrency bar. Here's Trump handing out crypto burgers. <laughs> yeah. This is a crypto burger. <laughs> no, it's a Bitcoin burger. Actually, Bitcoin. actually you should name them. Name a Bitcoin and a crypto. <laughs> They're like regular burgers, the crypto burgers, but instead of beef, they're made of Sam Bankman Freed. <laughs> Earlier this week, Trump touted World Liberty Financial, the new crypto venture founded by Eric and Don Jr. Trump told the crowd it was Barron who encouraged him to embrace crypto, saying this. Barron's a young guy, but mm -hmm. he knows it. He talks about his wallet. He's got four wallets or something. And I'm saying, what is a wallet? Explain this to me. Donald Trump has made it very clear he has absolutely no idea what cryptocurrency is. Here he is just a few weeks ago. Have a good time with your Bitcoin and your crypto and everything else that you're playing with. <laughs> but the beauty of Donald Trump is he knows a scam when he sees one. Game recognizes game. Cryptocurrency and Donald Trump were made to go together. And I like, look, could I be wrong? Of course. I just have this feeling, and you'll remember. If, you've, if, I, if it never comes, you won't remember. But if it does, you will. There's going to be indictments related to Donald, to the Trump family venture into cryptocurrency. I don't know why. I don't know how. I have no evidence to support this whatsoever. I have a feeling. <laughs> Speaking of game, recognizing game. <laughs> When pressed for evidence that immigrants are stealing Ohio pets for food, Jingo Dingo Vance's spokesperson <laughs> gave the Wall Street Journal a police report filed by Springfield woman Anna Kilgore, who alleged local Haitian immigrants might have stolen her cat, Miss Sassy. Oh, so now Vance is standing up for childless cat ladies? <laughs> However... When the Wall Street Journal followed up with Kilgore, she admitted she eventually found Miss Sassy alive in her own basement. <laughs> That's always the thing with cats. Every day it's like, has she been stolen and eaten by Haitian immigrants or is she under the couch? 
Then the interview took a turn when Kilgore shouted, wait, where's my phone? Have you seen it? Oh my God, the Haitians ate my phone. Probably in some kind of voodoo curry. Uh, oh, never mind. It's in my hand. I'm talking to you on it right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jellicle Dat Vance ab <laughs> absolved himself of any responsibility for the spate of bomb threats in Springfield and blamed the media for reporting on them. And you know what the governor of Ohio came out yesterday and said? Every single one of those bomb threats was a hoax. And all of those bomb threats came from foreign countries. So the American media for three days has been lying and saying that Donald Trump and I are inciting bomb threats when in reality the American media has been laundering foreign disinformation. It is disgusting. And every single one of them owes the residents of Springfield an apology. Reporting on a bomb threat isn't disinformation just because a bomb didn't go off. The bomb threats happen and are newsworthy. Oh, you say you got a bunch of death threats because of something insane I said, and yet you're still alive? I'm ready for my apology. Also, and this is an aside, hey man, at least pretend to be a human being. When bomb threats turn out to be a hoax, that's the part of the speech where you sound relieved, <laughs> not furious. <laughs> All these fucking bomb threats, they're hoaxes. Thank God. That's the best case scenario for bomb threats. <laughs> the latest anti-immigration news cycle really represents the fundamental change between Trump's first run for president and his third. Every Republican is a conspiracist now, and every liberal podcast host is hot. I don't make the rules. Prior to, yeah, prior to Trump's first term, there was at least some Republicans who could and would stand up to him. Now we're left with Republicans who don't even know how to stand photo of Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. The January 6th hearings were essentially interviews with Republicans still willing to refuse Trump's unconstitutional demands. Now those Republicans might as well be in a museum. The most annoying museum in the world. Just suburban middle-aged moderates coming in to take pictures with wax statues of Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney, a VR setup where you get tag-teamed by the Vindman brothers. Tag-teamed in a hearing, you freaks. Now those Republicans are gone, or they have abandoned their integrity, reformatting themselves to fit the Trump-shaped mold all conservatives must cram themselves inside. And there's a distinctly unfuckable shape to that mold. <laughs> so we've got Republicans spreading baseless conspiracies about Haitian immigrants, election fraud, ABC News sneaking the questions to Kamala, and social media is not only a vector for conspiracy theories, one major platform is now owned by a conspiracy theorist. Sarah Palin, running for office on 2024 Twitter, would have been a completely different person, the most monstrous possible version of herself. Instead, she was just quaintly awful in a way that no longer really exists, like a racist lawn jockey. <laughs> Speaking of someone who would say, oh, geez, if a kid saw a racist lawn jockey and would do his best to explain it in a way that's age appropriate, but also appreciative of how much children can actually understand if you give them the chance, Tim Walz spoke <laughs> at a rally in Asheville, North Carolina this week. In his speech, Walz pointed out the obvious reason the GOP is spreading lies about immigrants, because their policies are wildly unpopular. Here he is. They asked him if maybe it was an accident or he didn't mean it. No, he said, I admit it. I'm willing to create stories to spread fear to drum up support for us. The reason you do that is, is because if you told what you really stood for, no one would vote for you. It's not just about the awful lies they're talking about, it's about the terrible policies they're afraid to talk about. You don't pull the fire alarm at a restaurant when you want your date to get to know the real you. You pull the fire alarm at a restaurant because you were trying to impress your date in order to seafood tower, and then you saw the price and sweated through your clothes, and then when you were in the bathroom freshening up, you zipped your fly over a big chunk of your shirt, and now you're completely out of options. Speaking of self-sabotage, the head of the Teamsters said Wednesday that the union won't endorse a presidential candidate, the first time they haven't endorsed the Democratic ticket since 1996. They've worked seven elections in a row. Read the contract. They're on a break. You want to tell them they're not? You can fucking try. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to say, for the record, as a traveling tour show, we love the Teamsters. <laughs> we support the Teamsters. Speaking of trying our patience, Senate Republicans blocked an IVF bill supported by Democrats for a second time in three months Tuesday, to which Senator Tom Cotton offered this. IVF is not at risk in any state, and the Alabama example proves the point. The legislature acted promptly Why to did change they have to act what was an old law in to ensure Senate? access to... I because of Supreme Court decision. That happens but all the time. That imperiled access Courts to IVF. Courts make decisions. What... What an embarrassing moment for Tom Cotton, probably the most humiliated anyone's been on television this week. <laughs> uh. 
John Dullinger Vance missed the vote, but did, <laughs> but did have time to complain about the bill at his rally Tuesday, saying this of Democrats. They shoved through a vote today knowing it would have no chance of passing because they wanted to be able to say we support IVF and the other guys don't. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Weird to have you say it's like that, but yeah, that's it. That was easy. We got him. And then on Thursday morning, rumors began spreading that a major outlet was about to drop a damaging story about Mark Robinson, North Carolina's sitting lieutenant governor and the Republican candidate for governor himself. And the story was rumored to be bad enough that Robinson canceled two events and Republicans in the state were pressuring him to withdraw from the race. That story was hard to imagine in light of all the damning news that we had already learned about Robinson. Babe, something damning is about to come out about the Holocaust denier, nostalgic for when women couldn't vote, who castigates gay and trans people for their filthy lifestyles while reportedly going to a porno booth five nights a week. <laughs> what could the story be? Well, CNN finally published their report detailing online chats in which Robinson talks about liking transgender porn, peeping in a woman's locker room when he was 14, and wanting to own slaves. If a Republican can't run for office because he's misogynist, racist, and sexually objectifying of trans people, I don't know what the GOP is going to do. Lisa Murkowski is going to have to be eight senators and four governors at this point. <laughs> In comments on the message board of this porn website, Robinson referred to himself as a black Nazi and wrote, slavery is not bad. Some people need to be slaves. I wish they would bring it, slavery, back. I would certainly buy a few. Again, these are comments on a pornography website. <laughs> I go to the comment section of pornography sites for peace. Mr. Robinson for harmony. To goon with my brothers and sisters of all colors and creeds across this great nation of ours. How dare you, sir? How dare you? Keep your politics out of the nude Africa message boards. What do you think this is? Facebook? Read the room you're masturbating in. Speaking of beating, if you'd like to beat Mark Robinson and uh, help make sure that we win in North Carolina, a state that is in play, part of the reason Republicans are starting to clamor for this guy to step down is because he's hurting them in North Carolina, both up and down the ballot. That gives us a chance. We can win in North Carolina. This guy is still on the ballot, right? Republicans love this guy before they thought the, the only sin for these people is the fact that somebody might lose. That's the only sin that for these Republicans now. And there's a real chance that this guy can lose. There's also a real chance that he can win. So please go to votesaveamerica.com slash vote to sign up now. We are past National Voter Registration Day. We have uh, less than seven weeks until the election. If you haven't signed up and most of you listening haven't, please do me a favor and sign up. What a place for that kind of a discourse. The comment section of a porn website. It's a lot of politics. <laughs> I don't appreciate the comments really in any forum, but that forum, it's, n it's never the place, but it's not the time. <laughs> also, <laughs> Sir, this is it's a porn website. This is this place to get in, get out. <laughs> to, to drive through, my friend. It's not a Michelin restaurant. You know. <laughs> I've brought a book. What? <laughs> An eight-year-old girl in Bedford, Ohio, stole her family's mid-size SUV and went on a joyride to Target on Sunday, a crime known as granddaughter theft auto. She was found in the store nearly two hours later after successfully getting herself a drink from Starbucks. Weird that they served her, even though she had driven an SUV through the front door. But it's pumpkin spice season, so anything goes. The police department wrote in a Facebook post, this is real. This is a real post. They said they finally found someone who, quote, is in more of a hurry to shop at Target than my wife. <laughs> so just so we're clear, the entire police department of Bedford, Ohio, shares one wife. <laughs> A little girl drives a car into a mailbox into a Target, and you're like, women be shopping? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's just not appropriate. 
even if they indeed be shopping. <laughs> a zoo in Thailand is begging attendees to stop harassing and throwing water at Mu Deng, their baby pygmy hippo, after she went viral globally on social media. Hey, leave her alone. She's not a flight attendant. <laughs> and finally... Shoppers in a Northern California Costco were surprised and delighted to find Michelle Obama there promoting her new healthy beverage, Plezzy Fizz. Said the shoppers, I didn't even realize you could be back here without a membership. <laughs> when there's a crowd on the floor at Costco, it's one of two situations. An adult man is boxing out a group of people waiting for a rotisserie chicken, or the former first lady has clogged an aisle promoting her new health soda. <laughs> shoppers were somewhat less surprised to see Hillary Clinton since she was just there to buy a hot dog for the third time that day. <laughs> Something lost, the White House. Something gained, hot dog time. <laughs> Plezzy fizz is, of course, Italian for please. <laughs> Take a piss. <laughs> I'm sure the soda's good. I'm sure the soda's good. All right. Yeah.